Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this really awesome, really cool, colourful, easy to make roller coaster house. I think the best way to show this house off is to show you how it works. So you start all the way down at the bottom here of your track, you hop in the minecart, you flip this switch and you will be taken on a magical journey that will take you all the way up to the top of the roller coaster, which is also a house. You kind of appear here just by magic. It kind of just happens out of nowhere. And up here you'll find that you have this bedroom, you have enough room for a nice Nice little survival base if you wanted to. You could use it practically as a survival house or you could use it to store some hidden valuables or you could just simply use it as a nice cool little house that you just have in your world. And once you're done, all you have to do is of course just drop back into your minecart and come all the way down to the bottom. And that is the house guys. Very easy to make, very colourful really cool. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do hit that like button. I'd really, really appreciate that. I really would. I honestly would. If you hit that like, it helps me out. It helps the channel out. If you subscribe, please click the little bell next to the subscription button to ensure that you all of my stuff sent directly to your sub box. Without any further ado, let me show you how to make this thing. It's really, really simple. So if you want to make it, Here's what you'll need. Grab yourself some blue concrete, yellow concrete, red concrete, lime concrete, red stained glass paint, oak wood blanks, levers, rails and powered rails. And believe it or not, other than a minecart, you really don't need too much else. Now, I haven't got the minecart with me because I, well, I'm, I know that it's going to work, but of course you'll need one if you want to get up to the top and the bottom of the house. So once you have all of these materials, and once you've figured out where you want to make it, I'm going to be making mine right here. It doesn't take up too much space. You're going to want to start off with a red concrete on the floor. And then from that red concrete, going towards the center of where the house is going to be, we want to do two up diagonals. So that's going to be one and two. Go behind that second up diagonal by one. Then go left by one. Do an up left diagonal. Then go inwards by one. Then go left by two. One, two. Then go inwards by one. Then out one. In one. Out one. Move inwards by two. One, two. Move out by one. And then come towards the back of the wheel by four. One, two, three, four. Move in by one. Come towards you by two. One, two. Move in one. Towards you. In one. Towards you. Go left by two. One, two. Move towards you by one. Move left by two. One, two. Place a yellow concrete on top of that block. Then do two up left diagonals, one, two, then move inwards by one, like this, then go left by two, one, two, then move in one, left one, in one, left one, then then go left by two, one, two, move towards you one, left one, then do a three up left diagonal, so that's going to be one, two, three, we then want to go left, we actually want to move inwards by one, then left by two, one, two. We then want to move in one, towards you one, in one, towards you one, then in one, in by two, one, two, in one, then left by four, one, two, three, four, move inwards one, and then left by two, one, two, and then move in one, left one, in one, left one, 
In by two. One, two. Towards you by one. Then go left by one. And then place three up left lime concrete. So you want to place one, two, three. So we've changed color. Then move this third green concrete in by one. And then move it to the right by two. One, two. Then towards you one. Right one. Towards you. Right one. Move towards you by two. One, two. Then towards you. Left by one. Then do three up left diagonals. That's one, two, three. We then want to move inwards. And then left by two. One, two. Then inwards. And then left by one. Inwards. Towards you. Left by two. One, two. Then towards you one. Left by four. One, two, three, four. Then inwards. Towards you by two. One, two. Left. Towards you. Left. Towards you. Left by two. One, two. Towards you. We then want to go left by four. One, two, three, four. Inwards. Left by two. One, two. Inwards. Left. Inwards. Left. Then go in by two. One, two. Towards you. And then go left by two. One and two. We then want to move towards the center of the build by... We want to move into the center by two. One, two. Place a blue concrete. Move three blocks inwards using your yellow concrete. One, two, three. Place a blue. Move outwards from that blue using your yellow concrete in every direction by three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Place a blue concrete on every single end of the yellow. And then we want to connect the blues together. So we're going to place two blue coming outwards from every single blue. Every direction. One, two. 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 And one, two. And then we're going to connect them together. We're going to move every end block inwards and then connect them together at the corners. So we'll move every single block inwards like this and connect them together in the corners like that. So it looks as though they are joined together very naturally like a circle. And then what we'll do is we'll fill the center of this in using yellow concrete. So we want to fill the center of this in using yellow concrete like this. Wonderful. We want to connect that center blue concrete all the way down to the ground like this. It wants to come all the way down to the very bottom so that it looks as though that it's being supported by something. We then need to make the house. So the house is really easy. We basically want to take all of the outer yellow blocks and we want to place a circle of yellow on top of them. So a circle of yellow on top of them. We want to raise that yellow up by two rows. So that's going to be one. And two rows going all the way around the edge of the house. So that's going to be two rows of yellow on top of that first row. The entrance to the house is right in the center of the front. So it lines up like where we started off the build, if that makes sense. Like if you see this, you can see where the entrance is going to be. We have to take these pairs of yellow concrete that connect to the entrance. And we have to place yellow concretes on top of these. And then we have to connect them together diagonally in the center, creating kind of a triangular shape like this. We want the same sort of deal on the back, really. So we want to raise these up, and then we can connect them together like this. We're going to fill the back part up, though, 
we're going to raise up the sides so that they are as high as the other sides like this and then we're going to add a roof so we're going to use our red concrete and we're going to place a row of red concrete on the side of this and we're going to extend the roof forward so it's in line with the entrance and we're going to extend it towards the back so that it's in line with the back and we're going to do the same on the opposite side so we're going to do this and this and we're going to this is how the roof kind of works you want to take each end and you want to go up in well i mean you want to go in one up one in one up one in one up one in one up one so it kind of wants to connect together at the top you'll kind of see how it works like that and you want to do the same on the front as well it's just like a block inwards and then up and in up and in so on and so forth until you eventually reach the top and then you can just bring it down to the opposite side if you like and we're just going to connect each part of the roof together here and here and here coming up to the top and then just simply working our way down like this so all the way up to the top and all the way down to the bottom just like that and we want to be able to fill this window in here just at the front of the house so we're just going to fill this window in using glass and you can add a couple of windows around the house if you want to you can add one on the sides if you like and that's pretty much where i'd stop it's it's not meant to be like a really good survival house or anything it's just meant to fit in nicely with the whole motif of the house which it does it, it looks quite nice up there so once you've got that sorted out ladies and gentlemen the next part is you're probably wondering to yourself how do i get the track on there how do i get this thing running well it's easy uh, come all the way down to the bottom of the build, dig into the ground, like three blocks, one, two, three, in front of where you started, and place a row of red concrete in there. Place a, an oak wood plank on the end, chuck a switch on top of it, and you want to place a powered rail in front of that oak wood plank. And we want to run rails coming all the way up to the top of the house. So the way it works is we want to have powered rails on the incline parts of the build and we want to use pretty much regular rails everywhere else so everywhere that you can kind of get a get away with not having a powered rail then kind of place it but on these straight bits for instance you might want to place powered rails wherever you have kind of like a straight part then you might want to place a powered rail so maybe here just above the incline if you like and maybe just here and here and if you'll find that if you if you play some like like this if you kind of just play some like here and here these kind of parts then you'll never run out of power if that makes sense like it's, it's a nice balance so like on these incline parts are good anywhere that you have kind of like a straight um a straight part like three blocks in a row that's really good but i mean you, you don't need as many of them as i'm even using honestly I've found, but it's it's just better to have more of them than not, unless you're on like a budget. So, you, you know, you can very easily run these all the way up to the top of your build if you've got none of them. I mean, you could just have entirely powered rails if you wanted to. I mean, the, the only issue with having powered rails is that they need to be powered, which, you know, obvious, but... That you know you're gonna have to add more switches and stuff if you use more powered rails that's that's the entire point so um we're just going to keep placing them until we get all the way up to the top here and we'll be able to place this this here um do we want yeah we'll have one here maybe we'll even have two here and then we won't really need i don't think we'll need any powered rails coming around ah but we'll place some here as well why not on the side of the house just just for good measure so here we'll place some and here too just because and we'll run it all the way around and we don't need any powered ones up here except for maybe like you might want to place one there in the entrance of the house and there you'll see that you have ran rails all the way from the bottom to the top and remember if you just you might have to experiment if you don't have a lot of these but 
the, the more powered rails you have, the more of these you need. You need more levers. Because the way that I'm powering them, because it's not as irritating, is I'm just using levers underneath the blocks, like this, and inside of the blocks. So wherever you're least likely to see the levers, then I'm placing them. When you have a cluster of three like this, you can place one in the middle and it'll activate all of them. If you want to use torches, that is also very, very fine. Um, that's completely up to you. But even on these big bits as well, like one lever, will power all of them. So you don't have to worry about placing multiple levers for multiple parts. Um, if you've got a better way to power them, then do that. <laughs> but I've found that the best way to power on for me, I mean, I'm, I'm no redstone genius or anything, so I, I don't know whether there's a better way to do this. Um, I've found that levers work best um, because they're very targeted. They're quite small. You don't, you don't see them that much, and they don't stick out as badly as um, redstone torches do, which was my first idea was to redstone torch the entire areas, uh, entire entire track. But the problem that I encountered with that was there was too many of them, and they are too like they stand out too much. That that's that's the main reason that I didn't really like them too much is that they really stand out, and you have to place them in a weird way to get them to work. I've found um, if we place no okay, so that has to go there. Um, so yeah. It, again, up to you how you want to power your powered rails. I this this is what I found that works for me. And then when you, when you get all the way up to the top here, um, would this work? Yeah, that works. So you could easily just have a minecart here, or you could. I mean, what you could do is you could bring it as far as here, and you could bloop bloop. Just have a nice specialized switch for your powered rail so that you can get all the way down to the bottom as, bot bottom as well. And for the bottom, you might find that you, you prefer a button rather than a lever, uh, by the way, because I'll, I'll show you why. Okay, so you might prefer a button because if we check that this works, so let's chuck a minecart on here, okay? We jump in here, we're not going anywhere, but if we push the button, then that pushes us up, it starts us off, we come all the way up to the very top of the build, and we should stop here. So I'm going to get out, I'm going to, and again, like, buttons might be better, better than levers here, and it's, it's not going anywhere, right? But if you have a lever and you leave it turned on, then you'll get up here and you might bounce back, if that makes sense. So I'm going to get in here again, I'm going to push the button, and I gave myself a bit of a shove as well, and it will take us all the way down to the bottom. And a problem that I have with the lever is that if you come all the way down to the bottom, and you have a lever pressed, then sometimes you just bounce all the way back up to the top of your house again. But, you know, it's up to you. Do what you want. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much my entire message. So... Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please do remember to hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. I think it's a pretty cool house. I think it's a pretty imaginative house. And I might make some more roller coaster houses if you guys enjoy this. And I might just make up some make some straight up roller coasters. That might be cool too. So, if you did enjoy the video, please hit that like. Really, really appreciate that. Please comment down below. Let me know whether you like this. Whether you'd like to see something like this next. I, I want to see what you guys want to see. And if you do enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell next to the subscription button to ensure that you got all my stuff sent directly to your sub box. And if you want to see more of my stuff, not only do we make stuff like this, but we, we do also make some weirder builds around here. Like, this is a cute little concrete house. You're going to see a theme with these houses. Um, this is kind of like a cool water slide house if you want if you if you kind of like wacky builds and wacky houses then you know this is kind of like the corner of my world to do it but we do also do serious builds as you can see by that huge mansion over there and some of the other bases and stuff so check out the channel i'm sure that you'd love it thank you so much for watching guys have a great day hope you're interested in making i'll see you in the next video